Let's come back to the second part of lecture three. So here, let us look at the problem of verifying matrix multiplication. So here, the input here is we have two n by n matrices A and B, and then we have one other n by n matrix. Let's call it C. The question here is we want to check whether the product of A B. So when we multiply A and B together. Whether it is the same as C. So if you look at this problem, this is really similar to the problem of checking polynomial identities that we have studied in the previous lecture. So how can we do so? So one way, of course, is to multiply A and B from 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 scratch, and we compare the final result with that of C. So this is just like the brute force method. So how fast is this one? Okay, so so when we multiply two n by n matrices, the resulting so when we multiply a and b, so the resulting matrix will be an n by n matrix. So that means that there are going to be n square entries to compute, and then for each entry. It can be computed in order n time. So the brute force method takes n to the power three time. Now, if we okay, so once we have the result of a and b, then we have n square entries, and we compare each entry with that of c, the corresponding entry in c, one by one. So we take the this time all the n square time only to check whether they are the same. So n cube time by brute force to compute a times b, and then n square time to compare each entry. Of the resulting of a a b with c, so n cube plus n square, it is n cube time. We may do it better by applying a faster matrix multiplication algorithm. So one i one method is called the Coppersmith Winograd algorithm, and it runs in n to the power two point three seven six time. Okay, but we have already learned. How to check polynomial identities quickly? So, so if you still recall, when we do this checking, we are generating a random value and compute the corresponding value of the two functions. So here we can apply a very similar idea. Since we are working with matrix, what we are going to do here is we are we we are generating not a random number. But here, a random n bit vector. So this vector is an n bit column vector. Let's call it V. So what we are going to do here is we compute a times b times v. So this is a b v, and we also compute c v. And we look at the resulting value of a b v and c v. So these are vectors and vectors. If these two vectors are the same, then we will report yes. The a b is really equal to c. Otherwise, we will report no. So how fast is this method? So first of all, computing c times v is easy. So let's take a look of how to compute this c times v. Computing c times v takes n square time. The reason is that in the result of c times v, this will be a column vector. This column vector has n entries. And then for each entry, it takes all the n time to compute. So n entries, all the n time for each, in the total n square time. And let's get back to the other part. So we will need to compute a b v in order to make a comparison. So computing a b v, if we do it in a straightforward manner, we first compute a v a b, we get n by n matrix, and then we compute v. Then the total time will be n cube. But if we do it smartly, then we can make this part n square time only, because matrix multiplication is associative. So the result of a times b and then times v will be the same as we compute b times v first. So let's call it u, and then we get the result u, and then multiply this with a. So we compute a u. So the result of a u, where u is equal to b v, is the same as a b v. Now, because of this one, then here this is a computation, just like computing C V, right? Computing B V will take n square time, 
And after that, we get the column vector u. And we apply the same method again. When we compute au, this is again another n squared time. So each of these computation here and here, they take n squared time. So altogether with n square, n square, n square, so altogether the overall time is order of n square. Now to complete the discussion, we will need to find out what is the 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 the, the chance of this uh, this method working. So is the method always correct? So obviously no. So it will be wrong when a times b this 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 matrix is really not the same as c, and also for the random vector v that we have selected. ABV turns out to be the same as CV. So in that case, we hit a certain vector V that fool us so that into making in the wrong conclusion that AB is equal to C. So how likely do we get a bad random vector V? Now first of all, for this V to be bad, it must make ABV equal to C times V, right? So a b v minus c v. So we can we can do it something like this. This is the normal matrix uh, uh, operation. So we can create a matrix called a b minus c, and then this a b minus c times v is having the same value as a b v minus c v. Is that okay? Now it must make this a b v minus c v to be equal to zero. But on the other hand, for v to be bad, we have also a condition that that a b minus c is a non-zero matrix. The reason is that we require that AB is not equal to C to begin with. Otherwise, we will never make any mistake. To ease our discussion, let us define D to, to mean this AB minus C matrix. So here, D must contain some non-zero entry because AB is not equal to C to begin with. So D must contain some non-zero entry. Let's call it DXY. Okay, so it looks something like this. So this is the matrix of big D. So it has many entries. It's n by n matrix, and it must contain at least one non-zero entry. It can be all of them can be non-zero, but at least one of them must be non-zero. So let's call it D X Y for our analysis purpose. Okay. So now let us consider multiplying the x row of D with V. So this is what we are going to do. So this is D, right? We are looking at D times V. So in particular, each row of D when multiplied by V, it has to be equal to zero. Yeah, because D times V is equal to zero. So the first row of D multiplied with V, it is zero. The second row of D multiplied by V is also zero. And in particular, because we have a non-zero entry DXY, so we are going to look at the x row of D. So we multiply the x row of D with V. And for V to be bad, as mentioned, the, the resulting of this D row of D with V must be equal to zero. So we can now rearrange the terms a little bit so that we can isolate the term D x, y, v, y so that we put the remaining terms here and then all the remaining terms when it is divided by dxy we should get v of y so for v to be bad we need to have this one okay let's get back to the question how likely to get a bad random v now the chance that v is bad is the same as the chance that d times v is equal to zero and when d times v is equal to zero we must require that the d row of d multiplied by uh, sorry the x row of d multiplied by v is equal to zero so this is what happens there apart from requiring all the remaining rows also when it is multiplied by v it is equal to zero so that's why we have a smaller than or equal to sign here this probability just require the the x row of d when multiplied by v is equal to zero instead of requiring all the rows to, to, to after multiplication is equal to zero. 
So this is easier to, to occur. So that's why it has a larger probability. And we claim that this probability is less than or equal to 1 over 2. So how do we get this? Okay, to get this, again, we are using deferred decisions to help. So we now consider the scenarios. For our case, we fix all the random bits of V. So recall that V is a random vector, right? We fix all the random bits of V except Vy first. So all the random bits except Vy are now fixed. So in this scenario, the right-hand side of this this term, this term, the right-hand side, this term, is equal to this one. And then we see that it does not depend on Vy, right? So it will not be a fixed value now. Now given this scenario S, so we, 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 we call it S, right? So at this scenario S, when we try to fix Vy, what is the chance that Vy is equal to right-hand side? The chance that Vy is equal to right-hand side is because Vy is not fixed. Vy, will, when we fix it, we will either set it to be 0 or 1. But now the right-hand side here is now a fixed value. So if this fixed value is equal to 3.7, then no matter what Vy is, whether Vy is 0 or Vy is 1, then the chance of Vy is equal to right-hand side will be equal to 0 in this, in this case. But on the other hand, if we are very lucky, this term evaluates to be equal to 0, or this term evaluates to be 1. Then in such a case, there is a way that Vy could be equal to the right-hand side. But in any such case, the chance of this happening is equal to 1 over 2 only. So in general, we write down the probability of Vy is equal to right-hand side given S is at most 1 over 2 because some cases it is 0, some cases it is 1 over 2. So in general, it is less than or equal to 1 over 2. And because of this, then we can have the resu result here to be less than, or one, less than or equal to 1 over 2 as we analyzed uh, uh, before. Okay, so this is, uh, so let's also take a break here. So this is part two of lecture three.